Anytime I go into a new game, I try to go in with a clean slate. I purposely avoid reviews, lest to have my opinions clouded by other creators' bias. Did they like it? Did they not? What are their grievances? What are their preferences? You know, it all becomes a bit overwhelming. And as someone that has not really touched Call of Duty since 2009 and the original release of Modern Warfare 2, I really just came into this game blind. Blind from not doing any research, blind from avoiding spoilers, trailers, or early reviews, and ultimately blind from my 10 plus years away from this franchise. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and I'm not going to be throwing down a comprehensive 30 plus minute review of MW2 where, you know, I dive into every single nook and cranny of the game. Instead, while this footage plays, I'm just going to touch on what I have enjoyed so far and what I have not. Pretty basic in design, but effective in execution. If you like what you see, maybe consider hitting that big, beautiful subscribe button and make sure to ring the bell to stay up to date on all my latest uploads. You can also find and follow me on Twitter for all my tweets on most things gaming related. All links can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Let's get this one going. Now, just to expand on what I mentioned earlier, I have basically no knowledge or feelings towards anything post MW2, the original. So I can't compare this newest COD title to say Black Ops, World at War, Warzone, Vanguard, Advanced or Infinite Warfare, or even Ghosts. I've been living in the world of Battlefield, and I haven't really felt the need to return to Call of Duty until recently. Now, I'm not a complete novice with this IP. I owned and played the ever-living hell out of the OG MW2 on PS3 and thoroughly enjoyed that game, but when Battlefield 3 kind of came along, I just lost myself in that world and didn't feel like returning to this one. So with that little trip down memory lane concluded, let's hop into the present and MW2 2022. How are my feelings towards this game? What does it do well and where does it fail? So I guess we need to start off with the overall performance of the game itself. And at least for me on PC, I can't really say that I've seen or encountered major problems. I mean, the game runs fairly well. I've seen a handful of crashes, mostly isolated to the early access single player campaign. And my rig, running on a 3090 graphics card, seemed to not really break a sweat at all. On full ultra settings, in 4K, I was sitting around, I don't know, 90 FPS, and when I did go in and tinker with the settings, I could get the refresh rate up to 120 FPS, at which point my monitor would hit max refresh rate. Now that I've had a good few weeks with the multiplayer facet, I'm sad to say I'm seeing mixed results. Not due to my setup, but entirely due to the game itself. You see, it constantly freezes for seconds at a time during matchmaking, at which point all voice comms mute as well. I've also seen mixed FPS dips during matches, especially ground war that are random, and I haven't quite figured out what to attribute them to. Kill cams sometimes go into like three FPS replays, all things I would expect the dev team could sort out, but as of the time of this video's publication, have still not been corrected. Now, in terms of the single player campaign, which for me has always been a highlight of the Call of Duty franchises, I actually kind of enjoyed this one. There were, of course, plenty of expected Michael Bay set piece moments hanging upside down from a chopper while shooting at oncoming vehicles, scaling and jumping off cliffs, chasing a tank that's shooting at you while attempting to throw C4 on it. You know, everything you've kind of come to expect from a COD single player campaign. I found the gunplay was overall entertaining, and it's always good to be back with Task Force 141. In fact, for this one, I thought the voice actors they used for this campaign were quite good. Camargo's performance as Valeria, aka El Sin Nombre, was memorable, and hearing Ghost and Soap banter back and forth is always good fun. For me, the strongest mission was Alone, where we played as a wounded soap, having to scavenge and craft a scrap in order to create things like weapons and smoke bombs. I played this one on the higher difficulty, so for me, that mission was especially intense. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk multiplayer, because, you know, that's probably what most people want to hear about. How do I feel about this huge portion of the game, and... 
You know, this is going to be a huge pile of all over the place. Yeah, I almost said a bad word there. Let's first start off with the gunplay, which overall I don't have a problem with. The weapons seem to handle just fine, the reloads and aiming work for me, and overall the sound design, as in how the weapons sound, that's mostly accurate. Taking that a step further, the overall soundscape of multiplayer is good, save one major glaring issue, footsteps. I don't know what happened during development. I don't know if this was a design choice. I'm leaning towards not because I have been told by others that actively participated in the MW2 beta that it wasn't always like this. But damn, does this game give you some crappy feedback when it comes to locating enemies using sound. I fiddled with my sound settings. I've watched all these tutorials on the best settings to hear footsteps and honestly, none of it works. Mono versus stereo, headphones versus home theater, levels for the different sound categories, it honestly doesn't help much. I mean, I can hear my size 15 combat boots stomping across the maps, as well as my teammates, but enemy soldiers all seem to be 9th or 10th degree ninjas, and it's only at the very last tenth of a second do you seem to hear them running up on your position. Then these enemies have the ability to pop the dead silence field upgrade, and... Yeah, let's just say it gets super frustrating when you are PTFOing, holding down an objective, and YOLO McSwaggins come sprinting and bunny hopping in, not making a single footstep sound, not playing tactical, not using common sense. But, you know, they end up killing everyone in sight because of this super overpowered sound perk. Coupled with the sounds that seem to be coming from everywhere through your headphones when you do hear someone, and this side of the game just fails across the board, at least it does for me. Now this deficiency with the sound design is amplified a million fold when you add in TTK or Time to Kill. Everything in MW2, every weapon, handguns, shotguns, ARs, SMGs, sniper rifles, you name it, it will kill another player blisteringly fast. Just as an example, most ARs will drop another player in three tenths of a second or less. Pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles of all kinds kill in a single hit. I like rocking a shield and throwing knives, of which even the knives, throwing or combat, are again one-shot kills. So basically, anything you encounter in MW2, the whole f map, can kill you in the blink of an eye. Now you can call that a design choice, but then, as someone that appreciates and understands FPS and combat shooters, you have to give players the ability to counter that insanely fast TTK. And this is where sound location would give players attempting to use it a distinct advantage. But, you know, it's not to be. Sound location doesn't work most of the time, and it's spotty when it does. So you end up guessing most of the time where to be aiming your weapon. And when it comes to spawns and the spawn system, You've probably heard about Call of Duty games, and this one is no different. Respawn timers are insanely fast, and the game is constantly putting players you've just killed in advantageous positions to your current location. You just get used to this kill order. Kill someone, make your way a bit further across the map, get killed by the same player you just killed as they spawned in just behind you and got that easy payback from behind. TDM has especially egregious spawns, and when I see it come up in the rotation, like say on Embassy, I just back out of the lobby. Okay, let's talk SBMM, or skill-based matchmaking, and this is a polarizing mechanic for online competitive shooters. Now, I enjoyed the original MW2 for just how random the lobbies would be. Some games you were the hammer, and other times you were the nail. Now, Battlefield is also another perfect example. I can log in and drop into a match of, say, Battlefield 1 right now. I might be on the winning side, I might be on the losing side, but it is random. These are games that just function on the principles of randomness. You get what you get. But with MW2 and Infinity Ward's iteration of SBMM, it takes gaming, removes all the randomness, and in many times, at least for me, removes the fun factor and forces you into an online tournament each and every second you are in a match. Every match feels super sweaty. And when you step back and look it all over, it really feels like the basics of this mechanic are to try to keep everyone at a one kill to death ratio. So for every kill you get, you're gonna take a death. And it's just exhausting. 
I'm not playing COD to feel like I'm vying for the world championship. But this system, what they have in place, literally slaps your ass silly round after round. And every now and then, I can go on a streak, I can chain some kills together, I'm able to guess the direction that enemy players will spawn from, and it kind of all works out. People call this game Camp of Duty, but when you were placed into these super hardcore sweaty lobbies, match after match, every weapon in the game is pretty much a one-shot kill, and the time to kill is literally in the blink of an eye. You have to have some sympathy for these camping players who are just trying to survive in this game. And speaking of surviving, my breakdown of MW2 would not be complete without first laying out my thoughts on weapon attachments and kill streaks. Now, as a fan of FPS games, we all love to customize our weapons, right? But with MW2, these weapon attachments all do more harm than good when you add them to your loadouts. I mean, in most cases, I run my weapons naked. Or maybe I use a muzzle, or maybe I use a grip mod because, you know, that awesome looking mag mod, you know, the one that gives you all the ammo, also hurts your movement speed, it hurts your ADS speed, it hurts your hipfire accuracy, it hurts walking speed, it hurts sprint to fire speed. So basically, everything that is vitally important in a Twitch shooter, yeah, it's going to cost you all of that just to double your available ammo. Then, as if that wasn't enough, each weapon has a ton of attachments that you can't unlock unless you equip and use another completely unrelated weapon. Hey, you want that great looking grip mod for your SMG? Well, you're going to need to equip this other battle rifle and rank that up to level 21 before you get and equip that grip mod on your current SMG. I mean, does that make any sense? It adds needless complexity to the game. Why can't I just equip the weapon I want to use and level it up? Why do I have to equip and hit max rank with like seven different weapons just to get every attachment unlocked for the weapon I truly want to use? Oh, and while we're talking weapons, I do like some facets and variants that you can achieve through the gunsmith system, but the whole concept of mods and fully customizing your setups is truly overshadowed by all the negative effects for equipping said mods and the game forcing you to use and rank up completely unrelated weapons just to unlock the mods you want. I'm just thinking this over and I don't want to sit here and go through all the kill streaks one by one and you know maybe that's a good thing that most of them are actually quite terrible but when you look at these kill streak rewards the whole system is front loaded to hell and back meaning the best and most effective kill streaks are the very first ones you get to use UAVs and counter UAVs dominate each and every match and since Ghost has been proven to not be an effective counter to UAVs these very basic kill streaks are the equivalent of dropping like a thermonuclear device on the entire map. I mean, you can't avoid them. They're fairly easy to get and are super powerful and useful. And if you've ever played a match of Ground War, it's all you ever hear. Enemy has a UAV, enemy counter UAV active over and over again. It's just too much. I'm just, I'm going to stop here and let's just leave kill streaks at that. Last topic I wanted to put in here is, and well, at least it feels this way to me, is this glaring lack of content and depth and substance in the multiplayer side of this game. I mean, hitting max rank at rank 55 honestly doesn't take too long, and then it just becomes a weapon rank up simulator. Camos, camos, camos seems to be the only thing that players are playing for, and as someone that hasn't been actively engaged with COD in, what, over 12 years, I guess I wanted to ask, is this how they all are? There's no challenges, there's no emblems, there's no achievements, and besides camos, there's really nothing that someone wants to play for. I mean, they're adding in some of this in Season 1, along with a stat tracker, which honestly should have been in the game since launch. But one of the strongest elements of the original MW2 was, number one, that original weapon unlock system. The more you used a weapon, the more attachments for that weapon you unlocked. And then number two, its whole use and its system of challenges and achievements. Get 100 kills with this grenade launcher, you get this emblem. I mean, I personally felt a sense of accomplishment when I got that 25th nuke, maybe it was 10 nukes, I've honestly lost track. And then I got that animated nuke emblem. This version of MW2 has nothing like the original. Equip a weapon, do some Assassin's Creed inspired challenges for kills, and hey, you got another camo. I don't know, man, it just feels so barren to me. 
Throw in the fact that about half the maps are meh for me, and then MW2 loses its initial pop very quickly. I do, however, like the third-person mode, but you ultimately get tired of the limited maps and modes included with third-person mosh pit. Maybe this is one of the reasons I try to now only play when friends are logged on. But even then, this game throws a huge roadblock at you, as when I'm talking with them in party chat, it makes it a hundred times harder to hear those enemy movements. But hey, at least you can commiserate when the spawns place that player you just killed 10 feet behind you and they get that easy payback victory. Before I try to bring this video to an end, we need to answer the pressing question. Is this MW2 the best or bust? Well, let me start this thought process off like this. I haven't played pretty much any COD title since the OG MW2 from 09. And between these two MW2 releases, I'd take that 09 version over this game all day long. Not that this MW2 is a terrible game, because I personally don't think it is. It's just lacking so many features and depth its predecessor had. And I don't know, how can I put this? It, it just isn't memorable enough for me. With the 09 version, I had to find reasons why not to play. 2.30 in the morning and I can't sleep. Hey, let me grab a couple rounds of MW2. Time to go to work? Wait, man, you've got time for one more round. Anyone that's played COD, you know what I'm saying. I even challenged myself to remember the names of the original 09 MW2 multiplayer maps 13 years later and I think I missed or didn't remember the exact name of like four of them. With the 2022 version of MW2 I think I can tell you the exact name of maybe two of the maps. The rest I can recognize by sight but maybe that's my brain's way of telling me that it's just not interesting enough to fully dedicate to memory. So if just between the two MW2 games, the 09 version is better, at least in my humble opinion, then the 2022 version obviously can't be the best. Here, let me leave you with this. With the OG MW2, I had to set alarms on my phone. I had to force myself to shut that game down. With the 2022 MW2, I actually have to look for reasons to log back on and get in some playtime. And if nothing else registers with you today, if none of my talking points actually hit home, maybe that will. Addendum time. I thought I was done. I lied. Sorry about that. I've had this commentary recorded for a few days now, but IRL stuff has gotten in the way of posting it. And since I recorded this commentary, Season 1 has now gone live. Now, a few of my grievances with the base launch game have been adjusted in this seasonal update, mainly the issue with enemy footsteps. And they've also made a change to the sound effects when someone pops the Dead Silence field upgrade. Now, I haven't personally logged on this morning to test any of this out, but I didn't want to post this breakdown knowing that the devs had made adjustments to those items and not take at least a few seconds to acknowledge this fact. Ultimately, will this affect my feelings towards MW2 2022? Eh, probably not. I do plan to log some hours in the new DMZ, especially the third person mode because, you know, I want to see what that's all about. And if I can get in enough time with it, I will post a follow up to this video and lay out my thoughts and everything included with Season 1. I know Call of Duty has the ability to bring out the finest in the comments section, but I do look forward to reading your feedback on this one. Please smash that sub button, ring the bell, and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and a thumbs down if you did not. Remember, you can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over on my community Discord server. Links to all my socials can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Until the next one, thanks for watching. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.